everybody, this is Dana. Uh, unintentional part two. Uh, you remember my, one of my prior videos, um, I did a video on the primitive racing skid plates for my 2024 Cross Trek Wilderness. Well, it turns out we're going back to primitive racing and we're going to get the King Spring uh, install kit put in and that'll be today. Uh, by the way, update on the skid plates. They're absolutely fantastic. Have not noticed any decrease in miles per gallon or anything like that. Um, with some discussion with my rooftop tent and stuff like that, we decided to go ahead and throw the King Springs on and see what that does for, oh, I don't know, uh, ride height. Maybe it'll bring it back up a little bit with the way of the tent and stuff like that. We'll see. Uh, I've taken some measurements and stuff like that. I'll add it into the video uh, before. So I have before and after uh, ride height uh, differences and see what we got. So anyway, uh, let's head on over to Tigard to uh, uh, Primitive Racing and get those springs put on. See you out there. Hey everybody, this is Dana from Amber Dog Productions. So uh, this part of the video is going to be taken early uh, before the uh, install is done on the King Springs for the 2024 Cross Trek Wilderness. And uh, so what I want to do today before the install is done is get some measurements from several points around the vehicle so I have some form of comparative basis. The lift I'm getting uh, through uh, Primitive Racing uh, should be about a one inch lift, I believe. It's their King Springs package. And we're gonna be uh, putting it on my 2024 Crosstrek Wilderness. So let's get over there and take some measurements on this thing so we can kind of tell the before and after if there's a difference or not. The idea here is to give a little bit better um, uh, stability through, you know, curves and stuff with the added weight of the rooftop tent, uh, maybe a little bit of a lift, and maybe offset the difference between the weight of the rooftop tent as well as uh, the really minor difference of ground clearance loss by putting the skid plates on. It's not a whole lot of difference. Uh, if you watch the video on the skid plate install, you can tell. Uh, so anyway, let's get over there and take some measurements real quick. Okay, so these measurements are not going to be precise, okay? We're just going to do the best we can. So let's, uh, let's get some measurements done up here and see what we got. First one we want to do is we're going to check the clearance with the, uh, from the tire to the uh, top of the wheel arch. So let's see what we got there. We're going to go dead center. I'd say right now, in the outside of the wheel lip arch, it looks like it's about three inches in the front. And I don't know if it's gonna make any difference here, but it should if it lifts that. So let's, uh, let's go to a more accurate point and let's go like from this corner right here and see what we get. So now we're gonna, we're gonna try a, uh, another well-defined well spot right here at the corner of the uh, body molding to the ground. And again, we're not getting precise. I don't have calipers here, so we're just kind of roughing it in. So let's say from the ground, we're gonna say it's 10 and three quarters. This looks dead on at 11 inches. Uh, from here and the wheel, wheel well from the top of the tire to the top of the body, Let's say that looks like, let's measure it the same way we did the front. And that looks right about three inches as well. So I think between those four points of reference, uh, we should be able to tell with the body to the ground at those two point areas and the wheel arch lift. So let's see how that works out. All right, we're here at Primitive Racing again. That's Dimitri. Howdy. Once again, he's the pilot because I don't drive in the city well. And uh, he reliably gets me to places that uh, I need to go. So uh, we're here at Primitive Racing and today we're going to get those King Springs put in like I said earlier. And uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll catch up on that just a little bit. What do you think? Should be good. Is it going to lift it up like 10 feet? Maybe 11. Am I going to have to put like 55 inch wheels on it now? Nah, you keep them small. Keep we'll them small? Oh, that'd be... Yeah. Put some donk wheels on it. Maybe. Okay, all right. We'll catch back in a bit. 
Coming on in for the spring install. So we're in Tigard, it's kind of walking around while the uh, install of the king spring is getting done. And I kind of want to just take, take note that look down the street at all these American flags on both sides of the street, all the way down. And it's just kind of cool to see that. You don't see that out and about very often anymore and we're not near a holiday. And they're all the way down through town on both sides of the street. And they've got these fittings right here in the ground where they put these flags. So they, they apparently do this quite often. And I don't know about you, but I'm kind of a patriot. And I think that's pretty freaking cool. So hats off to Tiger. God bless America. Okay, they called and said, said it's done. So let's go have a look and see what uh, King Springs are all about. So it, it fits, everything fits. It did not lift the full one inch. We're just under one inch. So okay. um, the springs will still do the same. They're gonna help stiffen up the chassis, eliminate the body roll, accommodate for your added weight. It's just not the full one inch lift and that just has to do with the wilderness edition being slightly different. Yeah, and I know that the wilderness is already a little bit taller than the standard cross track, so that probably has a lot to do with it. Yeah, so you didn't, maybe not necessarily didn't want an extra inch, but it was a good test fit. Everything works. Subframe spacer kit worked fine. Everything is good to go. Drive do you good. do you think that it compensated for the skid plates? I would say so. Okay. Um, Even if it didn't, that's fine with me. But you know, uh, I was just kind of curious because I remember. There's that one guy that, that did ask about, is it safe to go under? Yeah, it's up, it's on its locks. Okay. So I had one guy ask about it. So let's see if I can get that on camera here. So yeah, there is not a lot of distance between the pan and the bottom of the skid plate. So we're talking, I told him about half an inch. It looks like three quarters of an inch. So not much as far as what you would actually possibly lose as far as ground clearance. But, you know, then there's the, but the problem is like what you were saying earlier is about the ground clearance not being so focused on the, uh, the center down through the vehicle, but the control arms, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, and those move too. So, I mean, ground clearance is kind of a, a broad statement. Yeah. But ultimately your car is protected, which is what you want. Um, yeah. So the minimal amount of ground lock, ground clearance loss is made up for by you know not damaging your oil pan or your transmission pan boy that transmission pan the first time we were here putting the skid plates on that was such a freaking wake-up call so explain to me if you got a second here's um let me get this camera turned around here Whoop, wrong way i'm still learning this camera <laughs> so explain to me what what's the overall objective of what's the overall objective of the king spring kit what is it designed to give us? So it's designed to obviously A, lift the car. Um, and then it is designed to accommodate for your added weight, like your rooftop tent. It helps with your body roll, because when you lift a vehicle, you're going to be a little bit more top heavy. Okay. Coming into corners, uh, you know, and everyone says they don't hot rod their cars, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all do. Um, so yeah, it helps with body roll, helps accommodate for weight, kind of just makes the car feel more firmly planted. Um, I have always felt a little bit safer in my cars once I've had a sticker suspension. Um, I have been installing King Springs on my vehicle since before I worked here. Oh, wow. Okay. Not completely biased opinion. So this is this has been out for a while then? Yeah. we um, King Spring is in Australia. They've been making springs for who knows how many years. I think we've been bringing them in for 20 plus. Oh, jeez. Um, okay. That's quite a while. These ones we specifically custom designed with King Spring. So it wasn't a spring okay. that they originally had or made or sought out to do so 
a lot of a lot of hands-on work with them. The owner Blake does that all. Um, so yeah. So I had noticed when I put the rooftop tent and stuff on there, there was no drastic leaning or anything of the sort on the on the wilderness anyway. Um, and I do know that the wilderness has different a little bit some different suspension stuff. I hadn't noticed anything drastic, but I could feel it. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be interesting to see how it feels now. Yeah, that's I'm, something I'm I'm looking forward to. I'm interested to hear your honest feedback. Well, you know I'll post it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, we uh, all good to go then. You're all set. We're just got to lower it down, and you can be on your way. All right, sounds like a plan. Well, Kirsten and Primitive Racing, thank you again. Of course, always happy to do it. All right, you're such a sweetheart. <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, measure these like I did last time from the top of the tire to the top of the wheel well, and then from these points to the ground, both front and rear. Um, take this measurement from the top of the tire to the wheel well, kind of with a grain of salt, because it's, uh, it's really an estimate. Uh, this point down here is much more accurate, I would say, because this has a radius to it and stuff, so. I'd say we're at about, like I say, take it for grain of salt. It looks like it's about four inches there. And uh, let's check the rear so we get that. Yeah. Well, it's about four inches too. Back to the front, to that front point. like about 12, 12 and a quarter from the ground to the bottom of that point. And from the ground to the bottom of this point here, we're right about 12 and a quarter again. So uh, we'll see how, how those numbers match up to the, uh, uh, the first measurements I did before the King Spring install. All right. What's most important that I have really noticed is right after picking up the vehicle and taking off from there to go get the alignment done after, after these were put on, not even a block down the road, the first thing I noticed was that it felt way more connected. Uh, the lean, it didn't feel, it wasn't bad before. I don't want to make it sound like it was bad before because it wasn't. Um, but I'll say that it didn't have the sponginess, if that makes any sense. It didn't have the sponginess because I got the rooftop tent and stuff like that. And it didn't have that kind of soft feel. It felt much more like I've got a hold of this. And then when you would accelerate into a turn or something like that and, and do a left or right hand turn, like you're a stoplight or something like that, you take a left hand turn. Um, it felt way more flat, way more connected. And probably about the best way I could convey that was it felt a lot like a lot like my Tacoma. Um, I've got a TRD, uh, 2016 TRD Tacoma. And it felt more truckish, but not in that bang, 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 oh my gosh, you know, feeling. Because my TRD rides like a truck, but it's a comfortable truck. And now the Crosstrek, it feels much more connected, much more predictable. Um, I guess, uh, gosh, it's, it's kind of hard to describe. It's uh, way better, that much I'll say.
it feels much better. And when you go over bumps and stuff like that, like speed bumps, and you don't get as much of a softened, cushy kind of a ooh, kind of a thing going um, with the added weight of the rooftop temp and stuff. Um, it seemed to firm that back up, but not in a harsh way. Your full suspension and shock absorption is still there completely, but it handles that stuff way better. What's my final kind of takeaway from this? I think my final takeaway from it is I like it. I like it a lot. Um, would I do it again? Yeah. Yeah, I certainly would. I was a bit skeptical to start with, you know, like, do I really need to do this? Whatever. Is it going to make any difference? And it was kind of funny because after um, pulling out of, after getting these done, pulling out, doing a couple left, left, right turns or whatever, it was immediately apparent the difference that it made. Did it make it like drive like a whole new vehicle? No, uh, it's still the same car, just better. Uh, so again, I'm not, you know, I'm not paid to make these videos or anything. I'm not associated with primitive racing. Um, not at all. Um, just an average Joe, and that's my honest opinion about the products. They're skid plates. I feel way safer having those on there. And with the uh, King Spring kit, I really like it. I think it's money well spent. Another thing I'd like to point out is, you know, you start talking about skid plates and stuff like that. Having skid plates on your on your car doesn't necessarily mean you're ready to go play Dukes of Hazard. You know, uh, remember how the underside of a vehicle is shaped. Yeah, the skid plates protect the engine. Thank God the transmission now, after getting underneath there and seeing what those did, wow. And of course, the rear end. Doesn't mean you're going to go play Dukes of Hazard now. But remember how the suspension is on a vehicle. You know, you got your rear end, let's say, sits like this. And then you got your control arms off to the left and right that sit at an angle. So people get all focused on, you know, ground clearance. Well, that totally depends on where you measure it. Um, and that that goes right in line with the uh, King Spring kit. You know, people, oh, is it going to lift? Is it going to lift? I would think this, I think the King Spring kit that I got, um, I think it's much more focused on connectivity to the ride, taming of it, firming it up enough to kind of give you that feel. You know, when you got all your gear and you're loaded up and you're going on them bumpy, wavy roads and uh, you've got a rooftop tent or something like that, and you're kind of bebopping on down the, you know, dirt trail or whatever. Um, this is going to give you the feeling that you really want. Um, I think uh, I'll have to look at the numbers. If it raised it or not. If it did, great. If it didn't, I'm okay with that too, actually, uh, because of the improvement in the ride. So at the end of the day, would I get it again? Like I said, yeah, I sure would. Would I recommend it? Yes, I would. Is it like you've got to get this done, like the skid plates? Uh, if you don't have skid plates on your cross track wilderness and you're doing off road -y kind of stuff, even remotely like I do, or even if you don't really, you know, I mean, you crawl up underneath your, your vehicle and take a look how vulnerable that transmission pan is. Just take one look at that transmission pan underneath these things and you're going to be calling 1-800 give me skid plates yesterday. Um, so yeah. But the King Springs, would I recommend them? Yeah, yeah, I think I would. Uh, if you're doing off-road stuff, I definitely would because it gives you back it gives you back your car. So to Primitive Racing and the whole staff and team out there, uh, yet another excellent product that I'm happy as a lark to have on my rig. Um, man, it, uh, it's transformed my little cross track in a, in a very positive way. All right, well, this is Dana Price at Amber Dog Productions, and we'll see you out there. Thank you.